Hey everyone, this is Christian here. I'm just going to be demonstrating how to install my packet batch AFXDP program. Um, I'm actually going to be using a Kelly uh, VM. I made with KVM and uh, QEMU on Ubuntu. So I have my Kali. I, I'm using this because I prefer the uh, ZSHL over uh, my bin batch I have on my actual Ubuntu desktop. Um, so first of all, AFXDP you require over the kernel version over 4.18. So anything that's 4.19 and over supports AFXDP sockets. Now. I do recommend having a more recent version because they have made many optimizations to the AFXDP socket since. So a recent kernel version, probably 5.10 or over, is recommended in my opinion. So anyways, there's a few things to note here is packet batch in general uses lib um, yaml for parsing config files. Um, and that requires a set of tools alone and AFX, well, BPF, um, especially like libbpf or yeah, BPF, uh, requires, um, libelf, so E-L-F. Um, so we're going to be installing those. So the first thing you want to do is clone the repository. And you want to use git clone, make sure you have git installed. Most operating or Linux operating systems have it installed by default. But just in case if you, uh, you can just use like app install git on like Ubuntu or Debian. Um, anyways, git space clone, you'll want the recursive flag because you want to download all the sub modules in uh, packet batch. Otherwise, you have to go into like each, uh, or no, you you go into the main um, repo directory and do git space submodule space update and then hyphen hyphen in it. So, anyways, we're going to. I don't think I can tab auto complete this, unfortunately. So this is the command you want to run, and again, this will download um, the lib yaml directory and um, the common directory as well. And then we're going to go into it, and the next thing we're going to want to do is install um, the required uh, tools. So we're just going to do sudo app install build essentials one of them that comes with make and GCC we don't use GCC for this we use clang so we're going to do clang lib yml uh, requires an auto config tool um, so just auto like without the IG at the end and also a lib tool and then BPF requires or lib BPF what we use requires um, lib elf hyphen dev so we're gonna install all of those here now when you're making the project we're going to use make you have to run it as root because when live yml runs it um it installs to uh i think the include path like the global include path which requires root to write to um, I might change that so it automatically runs sudo, but then it wouldn't work for other operating systems because I know not everything uses sudo. So that's why I'm just doing it so you just run it as root. I know that's a little less convenient, but that's just how it is for now. So we can just do sudo make. Now this takes a few minutes. If you see warnings, it's nothing to worry about. I'm just guessing it's just something. It's usually with a lib YML. My uh, code doesn't generate any warnings from what I've seen. At least with Clang. I don't know if 
It may be different with other compilers. Anyways, when it's done here, you can see it compiles um, no issue whatsoever. And then you can just do sudo make install. You could have probably done it in the same command by uh, adding two ends, but I just wanted to show the make itself. And this will copy the binary from the build directory to the user bin folder or directory, which should be added to your path. So therefore, you can use, um, you'll have to run it as a uh, root, but I know I have the default config, so it's really not going to do anything. Um, yeah, that's because the the interface is different on here. It's ETH0, not uh, ENS. Um, ENS18, which I think I have as default in here, because that's what my VMs use my on my home server. Anyways, that's basically about it. Also, this copies uh, a base config to that directory, uh, etc slash, or slash etc slash, um, packet bash, but packet spelled a little bit different. It's just P C K T. Um, but yeah, that's really about it. And then it should work. Something I'm going to be doing in the future is making a GUI application using GTK that will allow you to configure all of this easily in a GUI. And I think that will be great. Um, anyways, that's really about it. Um, thank you for watching.